traveling from the hot, humid air in sunny South Florida to the dry desert in Las Vegas, Nevada, we've made it to the Bellagio buy-in for $1,500. Let's get started. First hand here, there's a limp, a raise to 40. I have jack eight of clubs, and I decide to call here in the big blind. A little bit loose, but I flew all the way here. Let's play some pots. Heads up to 9, 9, 10, two diamonds. I flop a straight draw and one over card to the board. I check an initial razor bet $60 with about $750 left in his stack. And now I have a decision. Should I call or should I maybe turn my hand into a semi bluff and raise? I actually like the second option much better. I can put a lot of pressure on his potential one pair hands and also get him to fold out better hands like king high and ace high. So I raise it up here to $190. With my opponent's stack size of around $700, if he makes the call here for $190, I plan on shoving most turn cards except for maybe a 9 or a 10, but luckily it doesn't come to that. He thinks for about 45 seconds and folds. Nice to get a small bluff through right off the bat. In this hand, there's a button open to 30. I have ace three of clubs in the small blind. I could flat call here or I could three bet. And I actually like taking the aggressive route here. I think the button's gonna be opening up a very wide range. I could take down this money preflop or I could also get value from worse hands as well. Also by three betting, I can take the initiative and the aggression in the hand. So I don't really like calling much out of position. I like to three bet a lot of the time, which is what I do here. My opponent makes the call for $130 and we end up going heads up out of position to a 9-4 deuce 2 club board. We flop a massive combo draw, a flush draw, a straight draw, and one over card. I continue for $150 representing all those big over pairs like aces, kings, queens. And just like the first hand, my opponent thinks for a little bit of time and folds. The first interesting hand of the night comes when I raise king jack offsuit in the cutoff, the small blind and big blind call, three ways to a king high board, giving me top pair and oddly enough, the small blind donk leads into us for an $80 bet. Now from my experience in the past, usually donk leads into the initial raiser is a top pair holding or a straight draw or a flush draw. Usually when people have sets or two pairs or even over pairs, they like to check raise. But when the big blind now calls $80, I do feel like I have to tread a little bit lightly here. It is possible that the big blind could be laying the trap. It's possible the small blind could have flopped two pair with king 10 or king six, or maybe even flopped a set. I do feel like I'm ahead, but I don't think my hand is strong enough to raise, so I just make the call. Three ways now to the four of diamonds, which shouldn't change anything at all. And now the small blind slows down and checks. The big blind now checks to me, and I feel like after this action, we definitely have the best hand. I don't want to give out a free river card here, so I make it $220. Right when I get the chips out there, the small blind snap calls me and the big blind folds. An interesting spot here going to the river, which is an ace. And now the small blind leads again for a $420 bet. I have to say, I am very confused by this ham. My opponent let out on the flop, check called the turn, and now is betting big here on this ace river card. I mean, what is going on? Isn't this card on the river much better for my range? Wouldn't he check over to me and hope that I try to bet this card? Does he really have two pair? Does he have a straight, a set? Does he have one pair? I feel like I'm just never good given this action with my hand. So I basically rule out hero calling in this situation. Now my options are folding or maybe turning my hand into a bluff and going all in. Now get behind me guys. I do have a jack in my hand. So I block him from having queen jack for a straight. I think it's very possible he could have two pair here. And if I jam all in over his $420 bet, it could look extremely strong. But... I look over at his stack and it looks like he's only got about six or $700 left. Is he ever gonna be folding two pair for only $700? I don't know. I eventually decide to fold and my opponent was nice enough to show me his cards. Queen Jack for the nuts. Holy crap. I guess I dodged a bullet there. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't do one of the options. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, nice hand, nice hand. <laughs> 
Just a reminder guys, I end up playing online poker at least one to two times per week. If you guys want to play online with me, go down into the description below, follow the directions and get yourself online. Get some money in your account and start playing some poker with me. Next up here, there's a raise to $30, a flat call on the button, and with ace, queen, and the big blind, I decided to squeeze to 150 bucks. Only the initial raiser in the cutoff makes to call. Heads up to Jack Jack 9 with two clubs with around $300 in the middle. I decide to check on this flop for a couple reasons. One, I don't have a club in my hand. Two, I feel like he's going to connect very well with this particular board with full houses, trips, straight draws, flush draws, hands that just aren't going to be folding to a bet. But he decides to check back and the turns the king of clubs. Now giving me a straight draw and also giving me a range advantage here. I should have all the big top pairs like ace king king queen i can even have some full houses that i slow played so i start with a bluff here of 90 dollars looking to bet big depending on what comes out here on the river not thinking for too long the cutoff makes to call and the ace of clubs comes out on the river now we have top pair but there is four clubs on the board i consider maybe betting huge here on this river card trying to get him to fold out a hand like pocket eights with a club or pocket sevens with a club but ultimately i decide to check over to him and when he checks back, I don't feel like we're winning here very often, but when I show my hand, somehow we are good, and we end up taking down this pot here with ace-queen. We're up slightly on the day. I haven't eaten since breakfast about 12 hours ago, so I order some room service, some steak and eggs. It comes out fairly quickly, and it's not too bad. I end up eating right next to the table, and then another hand comes up very quickly, where I pick up pocket tens in the small blind. There's a raise from the cutoff to $30.00. A button call and i three bet here to 160 bucks cutoff makes to fold but the button comes along with a call heads up out of position in another three bet pot and it comes out six three deuce rainbow we do flop an over pair but this board is fairly connected there's some two pairs sets and straights that my opponent can have on the button and given the fact that i three bet pre-flop i'm just never really going to have any sets or two pairs on this board maybe sometimes i could have four or five suited but probably not very likely I do continue for a $100 bet, around one third size of the pot. I think my opponent's going to have a lot of smaller pocket pairs like pocket sevens, eights, and nines. So when he makes the call and the turns a six, I consider maybe leading again for a small bet, but I actually think a check is fine. By checking here, I can induce him to potentially bluff with a hand like ace high that he called with on the flop or maybe even king high. And also I can get him to overvalue a hand like pocket sevens or pocket eights. He does decide to put out a bet of $250, and now I have a decision. Should I call here out of position and then check to him on the river, or should I just try to get all the money in now here on the turn? He's got $900 left, and now it becomes an interesting spot. If he has a six, a straight, or a full house, I don't think I'm just ever going to get away from this hand, but if I call here on the turn, he's going to be checking back almost every single river card. So instead of check calling out of position, I decide to just put the money in while I think I'm ahead. I jam all in for his last $900. I feel like in this situation, he can make a call with a hand like pocket fours, pocket fives, sevens, eights, nines. All those hands I feel like are definitely possible for him to call with here. He doesn't snap call right away, which is great, meaning we should have the best hand. However, it is possible he could be nit rolling me here with a six. That is definitely a thing that happens here at the Bellagio. But eventually he folds, and we end up winning this one here with pocket tens. Not sure if he had a tough decision, not sure if he was bluffing or if he had a pair or not, but either way, in poker, when you win the hand, it doesn't really matter how you played it as long as the chips go back in your direction. This next hand illustrates a strategy that I've been using now for probably the past two or three years, which is adjusting my three bets according to the players at the table. Now, if I'm playing at a table full of all pros, I'm just going to be three betting and four betting hands that I feel like I always would in certain situations. But if I'm at a table full of mixed player types, which is usually how it is here at the Bellagio, I want to mix up my flat calling with really strong hands as well. So let's say you're trying to make money in poker. You don't really want to be battling heads up with all the best players at the table. You want to allow the weaker players to come in because that's how you're going to make most of your money. You're going to make most of your money by players making mistakes post-flop. So in this hand, there's a cutoff raise by a very good Bellagio reg, and I peel back ace queen of diamonds in the small blind. I would almost always three bet this hand, but there's a big blind player next to act who sat down with a drink with around $1,000 who was definitely a recreational player. So I decided to differ 
my preflop strategy of 3-betting and just make the call to allow the big blind player in as well. He ends up making the call, so we go three ways to a queen high board. Giving me top pair, we check over to the cutoff who puts out a bet. I'm just going to flat call on this board, and the big blind comes along with a call as well. So now we're three ways to the turn. Three of hearts bringing in the obvious straight draw of 5-6. I don't like this card because I feel like the cutoff and the big blind can definitely have some straights in their range. I decide to check over to the big blind who takes a very unconventional line here and decides to lead into the initial raiser for a $100 bet. The cutoff doesn't think for too long and eventually folds and the action's back over on me. Now if you guys remember the hand where my opponent led out with queen jack, for a straight draw, I feel like this is the same situation. I think when he bets out here for $100, he's going to have a top pair holding or maybe a straight draw. So I do consider check raising here for value, but I feel like it's pretty easy to get the rest of his money here if I call. I can also allow him to continue to bluff if he is bluffing. Now, heads up to the six of clubs on the river. Now any five makes a straight. I check over to him and he snap checks back and shows king queen. I show ace queen and I'm kind of kicking myself here, man. I wish I would have raised on the turn. We just got a bad river, but like I said before, can't complain. The chips are pushed in our direction. I end up getting moved over to a main game table where I play for another hour or so. No major hands of significance happens over here at the main game table. I probably lose a couple small pots that dig into my profit, but after being up over 15 hours, flying six and a half hours across the country and playing a short two hour session, I end up calling it a night, racking up my chips and booking a $600 win. I take my chips over to the cage and deposit them into my account. And then I decide, you know what, let's take a nice long walk down the Vegas Strip. One of my favorite things about coming to Vegas is walking down the Strip and looking up at the big bright lights of the casinos and hotels. It's just so much different than the small country town I grew up in for 20 years in Maryland. So when I come out here to Vegas, I like to take in the sights. It's a two and a half mile walk back to my condo, which is by the Westgate. So I leisurely walk back here. Hope you guys enjoy this video. More Vegas videos to come. And until next time... I'll see ya.